these are the great wing shooting destinations of the world. Steeped in tradition. Offering the pinnacle of shotgun sport. Tour the planet with us. Hi, I'm Chris Barther and welcome to Southeast Georgia. Today I'm the guest of Chuck and Charlie Gaskin, who together have created one of the finest quail habitats in the Southeast. It's a rare commodity these days. 1,000 contiguous acres of prime southern United States quail country. But that's what you discover when you pull through the gates of the Dorchester Hunting Club in the low country of northeast Georgia. What um, Charlie and Chuck Gaskin have achieved here is quite amazing. Over the last sort of like seven to ten years, they've cleared land and put in some prime habitat for quail. They liberate them early season, October. There's no birds uh, put and released like um, day shooting. These birds have truly gone wild, and you'll see some of the best covey rises anywhere in the uh, southeast and in Georgia in particular. I've been lucky enough to uh, hunt several different plantations and uh, you know the quail era match for any and surpassed most. Um, you're going to see a lot of birds and a lot of big covey rises. It's going to be a, a really great day. Come in, saddle up. Come. All right. I've got an appointment with a quail. Forward. <laughs> At many plantations in the south, quail hunting is a tradition. At Dorchester, it's a passion. Our intentions from the beginning were to have a quality bird hunting experience. Um, a lot of places will have fancy lodges and um, white coats and whatnot, and gourmet cuisine, and we felt like with um, good southern home cooking and fabulous birds that fly great that you don't have to kick and push around to, to make them fly, we felt that, that would be the place we needed to be with the birds that show off out in the field instead of around the lodge area or whatever. You'll see the size of the cubby rises and the shooting opportunities. This is like one of the best quail experiences that I've had. Chris Batha is sharing the field with three old friends today, sharing with all of them the splendors of a wonderful day of quail shooting in the south. I can't think of a better place to be. It's morning in mid-February, there's almost no hunting seasons left open anywhere across the United States. But I got the rare invitation to come down to the Dorchester Club in South Georgia to hunt bobwhite quail. My understanding is this place is just loaded with birds. It's a rare opportunity to even get to come down here to hunt and to be able to do it when there's no other hunting going on, I can't think of a better place to be. All right guys, this is the first stop. Get off here. Talk a quick bit about safety. Put some dogs on the ground. See if we can find some of these big covers this morning. Another good friend that I've got coming with us that we've been invited is uh, Gil Morgan, who's a, 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 a really, really uh, good company, great shot. We have a, a, another guest with us today I'd like to introduce. Terry joined us later. Terry's from the Shoot and Sportsman. He's a star photographer for him. So, you know, he has been known to hit the odd quail. That's always a priority here at Dorchester. We always want to have a good hunt. Most of all, we want to have a safe hunt. We're going to hunt here today using a pair of pointers, and we use a Labrador retriever to flush the birds with. Um, we have two guys shooting at a time. When the labs, dogs point, in relationship to me and the dogs will be 12 o'clock. One we'll shooter to the left and forward, and one to the right and forward. I uh, brought you something to shoot with today, Bill, or I think you'll really enjoy. It's a uh, Famar's hand built well, custom thank shotgun. You, Chris, you really didn't have yeah. to. If you don't miss all day with it, we'll think about giving you a discount on it. <laughs> Birds everywhere this morning. We'll so have a good day. Birds, birds! <laughs> that's what it's all about, you know, that's southern Georgia quail. You don't see cubby rises like that anywhere else. That's just the best. Right, friend. Bird, bird, bird! Welcome to Dorchester. <laughs> Good girl. 
little hen, Bob White. Hen, Bob. When you see that many birds, you know, you, you know, if you're a hunter, you just want to get into them, you know. Bye, Fred. At the beginning of the 1900s, quail hunting was at its prime in the southeast United States. Good girl. Good girl. Much of the country had sparse human habitation, and while there was agriculture, the inefficient practices of the time were a boon to wild quail populations. Today, what little all wild bird quail hunting remains is locked behind guarded gates. Well, the Dorchester Hunting Club near Savannah, Georgia, offers a real taste of what southern bobwhite hunting was like in its prime. Dorchester's carefully managed and manicured hunting fields are chock full of hard-flying quail, with an extra surprise or two thrown in for good measure. Chris Batha and company are in the thick of things. Wow. Working in the shooting profession, most of my time spent teaching, so to get the opportunity to actually just go out in the field with a friend and shoot is just a real buzz. And uh, I saw it like a kid before Christmas night, um, same thing last night. I was really looking forward to this. I was up earlier than I need to be, and uh, I'm raring to go. That gentleman? Yep. Good friend. Hey. Oh. 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 Made that fun Mars look good. <laughs> That's the only kind of snow we get here in South Georgia. The price of that gun's going up, Bill. I thought you said it was coming down. <laughs> There's no question that Dorchester has the habitat management down. I mean, the cover is absolutely perfect for the birds and for the hunters. They've got things set up the way it needs to be. Uh, hey, whoa. What's that? Right, right. Bird. Oh, it was too low. Yeah. You know, it was what we call a hopper up and down. <laughs> Always better part of Valley B say. What's that old um, English rhyme? For all the pheasants born and bred, they're not worth one man dead. That was a 35 yard plus bird. I didn't say it didn't fly on 10 yards after it was hit, but. <laughs> several times and we've always got into those big coveys and we've saw what six huge covey rises some of them 40 birds in a covey Fire. Fire. let's get real birdie up in front bro. there you go i told you and again covey rise covey rise got up nothing to do with the dogs just real skittish got up I don't know just that 25 yards too soon on us and uh, it's been a frustrating morning for me I, we've had a few singles and a few shots but um that's why they call it hunting you, you know it's a common myth among everyone that you take a, a pen reared bird and release it into the wild and you can't make it behave like a wild bird and and, and that's where I'd, our opinion of that differs greatly because if you take that bird and put him in the right environment, in the right habitat, and he has the time with, with the predators that get after him and all the things that happen to the other birds, then he will virtually become just as wild as that wild bird that was hatched on the ground on this place. The, the greatest pleasure that we get here, and I think that, that my dad will agree with us, is the smiles that we see on the faces of our customers when they come in. And, and you know, it's, it's a wonderful thing to be able to work in an environment where you're around happy people that are having fun. If, if someone's at Dorchester quail hunting or duck hunting or deer hunting, they're having fun. And, 
and probably the, the most rewarding part of all of this is, is that smiles as you see on people and them leaving here happy. So that's probably the most fun. There are so many quail at Dorchester Hunt Club, it might be easy to adopt an attitude of, if at first you don't succeed, try, try again. But serious wing shooters like those joining Chris Batha on this outing take great pride in keeping their bird to shell ratio strong and in still making some spectacular shots. Whoa, right? Dorchester's birds fly hard and offer plenty of opportunity to earn your bragging rights. After lunch, Chris's group of four hunters breaks off into pairs. Chris is sharing the field with good friend Bill Miller of the North American Hunting Club. The opportunities have arisen for Bill and myself to shoot their own, so we're going to have an hour or two together and then uh, we'll catch up with Gil and Terry later on. Chris and I have had a lot of fun shooting birds in Argentina. Other times we've been together shooting sporting clays and uh, we've got a pretty good rapport. We have a lot of fun with each other. Good luck, friend. Hang on. I got one. That was a great shot, Bill. Thank well, you. You're shooting well. I've got to tell you, that shotgun suits you. <laughs> Even if you think the price doesn't. <laughs> An invitation to come and hunt a place like Dorchester is rare enough in itself. But I got down here and one of the other hunters, Gil Morgan, offered me the chance to hunt with his Fomars shotgun. Something Whoa, I never huh? dreamed I'd get the chance to do. For a gun that I just picked up and uh, started shooting, I'd say, I'd say I shot pretty well with it. Yeah, it's just good. Oh, it? Nice shot, Bill. Look at that. That is beautiful. I got mine. Well, there's more testing shots, sir. I'd like to think that, you know, rather than the American eviscerated oven ready shot, I let a little air get between me and the bird. Flush, Frank. Bird, bird. Great shot. Bird. Two more Frank, down. So this is another one here. You're not going to claim that one, Bill, are you? I'm not going to claim. There's that two That one out. over there. That was mine. There's two out there. Oh, okay. That's all right then. In Argentina, Chris and I got shooting next to a windmill one afternoon, and, and uh, we're trying to land doves in a ring, an old silo ring or fire ring, and. Uh, I think that afternoon I called Chris a cocky Britishman or something like that. He hasn't changed a bit, but that's what makes him so much fun to hunt with. I thought you were all about waiting for him to let him, let him well, get Well, I have to catch up with you, don't <laughs> I? If I don't get onto him quick. <laughs> you know, I've shot with Bill quite a lot over the years, so we, 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 we work well as a team. and. Um, you know, even though he claims most of the birds I kill, you know, he's good to shoot with. <laughs> that one turned me inside out. It felt like a ballerina. No, don't say anything. You didn't look like a ballerina. Yeah, I know. I knew that was coming. <laughs> Here we go, guys. Point right here. Bill. Good shot, Bill. 
How was my ballerina invitation? Yeah, yours was a little bit more uh, athletic <laughs> than my attempts earlier. <laughs> that was excellent. I have to say, the uh, quantity and quality, you can't usually have both, but that walk, it had it all. It uh, had quantity and it had lots and lots of quality, as good as it gets. Close, Ray. No one behind him, to your right, Bill. Good shot. I thought it was mine. <laughs> <laughs> he keeps claiming yeah. all my birds. <laughs> I hear Bill shoot, so I just take orders. No, no, I was thinking more that you miss and then I hit them and the guy <laughs> thinks they're yours. Right to heel. Right to heel. Good girl. I suppose you're going to claim that one as well, Bill. I just do what I'm told. I heard Bill shoot, Bill shoot. So, who are you nah, shot? Bill shooting male birds in the head. This has to be your bird. That's oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> Flush, Ray. Bird, bird. The tradition of southern quail hunting Great is shot. one part bird, elusive bird. birds. One part fine gun, one part friendly sportsmanship, and three parts fine dog work. Look at that. That is beautiful. Dorchester Hunting Club near Savannah, Georgia has that recipe down pat. The guides and their dogs work in tandem to keep the hunters safe and happy. She probably flushes 30,000 a year and probably retrieves 10 to 15,000 a year. Well, probably five or six hundred ducks, and probably in the neighborhood of twenty-five hundred to three thousand pheasants she'll retrieve in a year in the six months that we're open. The scent power of a dog's nose—it's it, it, unbelievable. You know, those dogs will find quail, in, and there's quite a lot of wet ground there. They're finding quail, and, uh, and then, I don't know. We must have had what thirty, forty different points. Um, the, the number in the bag <laughs> tells me it's that many. I have to say the dog works superb and the handler, D, you know, faultless. Just a, a real pleasure to work with a professional. If you're a gunner or a hunting enthusiast, you're probably familiar with the work of Terry Allen, an award-winning photographer in the industry. And we were very lucky with his busy schedule for him to shoot with us today. Um, I was hunting with him late this afternoon. We were coming along a, a, a small uh, covey and, and um, the dogs flushed, the uh, flushing Labrador pushed them up and Terry killed a beautiful left and right and with that hammer gun, 110 years old Scottish hammer gun he's so proud of, you know, 28 gauge, that takes him doing and uh, he put me to shame quite honestly this afternoon, he, he, he outshot me and it doesn't get much better than that than watching a good friend shoot great. Let's, let's leave if we can find some more. The perfect thing about this sport and my career and being able to combine the two, I mean, my, my career is, I'm an advertising photographer. My, my favorite pastime in sport is this uh, bird hunting and, and the gun. So when I put the two together, it's, it's a perfect little world there. And uh, to be able to shoot a nice artistic picture of a gun lying, lying in, the, in the brush with a show bag and a couple of birds that you just harvested and make a, a nice looking piece of art that's that's good enough to go in a magazine that's a lot of fun it is photography is exceptional and it's published in many journals and uh, you know he's quite modest about it but he does take absolutely fantastic photographs you'll notice that Terry and I have been using hammer guns today uh, they're a little different the 100 years apart, a modern and an antique gun. And the antique gun has the twist or Damascus barrels. This has fluid steel, beautiful obviously engraving. And the hammers are cocked just before you're uh, ready to shoot. This is because unlike a modern gun, it doesn't have a safety catch. This is a modern Italian gun. The hammers self-cock and so therefore you have a safety catch so the triggers are blocked. Um, both intrinsically the same gun and uh, the patents made in this gun probably went back a hundred years and found their origins in this. And Abbiatico and Salvinelli, or from Mars, from Italy, have created a 
a modern copy or a modern masterpiece. Both beautiful guns and a real pleasure to shoot in the field with them. If we're lucky, he landed in there. I don't know. The well, dogs maybe, maybe the dogs can flush him back out yeah. into the open instead of deeper in. It's always great to shoot with good friends, and Gil Morgan is a good friend. Uh, this afternoon especially, uh, I had the opportunity to see him kill a cracking cock pheasant. We'd been uh, walking up the road hunting quail uh, and the dog had bumped the cock pheasant, a uh, real beauty, and he had got up, flown a couple of hundred yards and dropped into some uh, longleaf pine. Well, he could still the be dogs. there. He might, be, he might have been long gone. He might have run on us. As he was walking up, the, uh, the guide had um, gone back round. He had gone through with his uh, infallible uh, Labrador, um, guaranteed to find any cock pheasant on the uh, property. There he goes! No! What a shot! The rest of the story. Nice shot, Gil. Thank you, Chris. <laughs> Making up for lost time. Dead? Dead? Good. Sir, congratulations for Thank a 28 you. ball. That was a great shot. That was a long shot and a, a nice bird. You're looking rooster. Yeah, that is terrific. Uh, it adds a lot to me to be able to shoot a gun that's well over 100 years old, and it's, uh, you know, it's the uh, pinnacle of uh, of shooting perfection. Uh, hasn't hasn't improved significantly since the English uh, got it right in the late uh, 1880s, 90s. So, yeah, it's a treat. That like cackling, big, fast flying, you know, the crashing noise of a cock pheasant leaving the ground, always exciting. And uh, I've got to say, Gil done well. He, he killed it with a little 28 bore as well. And uh, that just about finished a perfect day for me. Thank you.